I've been amazed at the things God has been doing in this church, the words that have been coming forth from this pulpit, and not just by pastor. I mean, Jasmine and Drew on Sunday blew my mind, and my soul was set on fire by that word. And our Bible studies, every single one of them has been so anointed. Everybody that's taken a seat at that table, it's, they're not even the same person when they speak. You can just feel the move of God, and it's been fantastic. So for all of you that have been following the move of God and stepping up when you've been asked to teach or preach, thank you because you're changing lives. You're ministering to us and changing our lives. On Wednesday when we were in Bible study, I was in a weird headspace. I won't lie. We all have flesh. <laughs> but Chris wrote on the board their title, and right underneath it, he just wrote, welcome. Now, I have a weird mindset, and there's just some words when you hear them, you're kind of like, who made up that word? Where did that word come from? Like, Julie has a thing with the word pants, and Nate has a thing with the word walrus. But I was like, welcome? That's so weird. Why do we say welcome? What does welcome even mean? So I decided to look it up, because that's how I am. <laughs> but it means to be received with gladness or delight, especially in a response to a need. So it's to be received with gladness. So when we say, welcome into my home, welcome to the party, welcome to our service, welcome to this wedding, it's in gladness. You're full of joy when something is going on. Or when somebody gives you a gift and they say you're welcome, it's because they're glad that they gave you something, that they could bless you, that they were able to do something in your life. You're welcome or welcome in. So I want to dive into the word in Luke chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 38. And we're going to go through verse 42. It says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered, he being Jesus, entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. That word received means to admit under one's roof, that is to entertain her hospitality, which to me sounded like she welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. And heard his word. Verse 40. But Martha was cumbered. That, I wanted to know what that meant. Because I was like, she was cumbered. It means she was distracted. That's what it means in the Greek. Martha was distracted about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, <laughs> thou art careful. Now, I thought that was an odd way to say the word careful, but in the Greek that means thou art anxious. You're anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now, I wanted to point something out here because I never really realized that Martha was the one to welcome Jesus into her home. For some reason, my brain skipped over that as a kid. I just thought Jesus was in their home. They were friends. But Martha welcomed him. But yet she was the one who was distracted the entire time. She was the one who was doing everything that she thought and probably was raised to do when you have a guest. I can imagine her being so anxious about having a guest. We all know how we get, let's be honest. I got to make sure my dishes are clean. I got to make sure my floor is swept. I got to make sure that there's not a speck on the wall because these guests may have to see that I'm kept together. Now think about it. Have you ever been invited to an event or a party or somebody's home and you feel the most unwelcomed in the entire world? They're so distracted by their own thoughts or things going on. You're sitting there and you're thinking, why am I even here? Why did they welcome me here if they, have, they want nothing to do with me? Wanting nothing, nobody wanting anything to do with you is a horrible feeling. So imagine Jesus, the son of God, being welcomed into this woman's home. And she's like, sit there, I got to do all this. Okay. So Jesus went, he's Jesus. He's not going to say no. It's a chance to minister. It's a chance to change a life. But she was too distracted by her own circumstances. She was too distracted by everything else going on in her world that she couldn't sit down for a minute to listen to what Jesus had to say. And the Lord spoke to me, and he told me that some of us, many of us at times, we want to be a Mary. 
We want to find ourselves sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to every word that he has to say, receiving every gift that he has to give, the wisdom that he has to give. But in all reality, we're a Martha. Because we come into this sanctuary and we say, Lord, welcome into this place. This is your home. Take control. But when his spirit moves in, you're so distracted by the things in your own life, you're missing what Jesus even has to say to you. We're missing the one thing that we've asked him to come in and do because we want to take care. We, we're doing what we've always been trained to do, to be an adult and grow up and take care of our situations. And the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is walking up and down these aisles, and he's just, anybody, anybody, anybody? I'm here. Bueller, hello, hello. You welcomed me in. Where's your mindset? Where's your heart? Where's your heart? Martha didn't get in trouble, I guess you could say, by the fact that she was serving. He talked to her about her being anxious and distracted. We come into this place, and many of us have a place to serve. We have the gatekeepers. We have the worship team. We have our pastors. We have our deacons. We have our SWAT. We have a lot of ministers in this church. There's nothing wrong with serving, but if you get so caught up in every little detail that you have to get it completely right and you miss out on the move of God, you're missing the mark. She was so caught up on making sure that her house was ready for him. We get so caught up in thinking, I have to make sure my situation is perfect so when Jesus walks in, he thinks I'm okay. He thinks I'm right. <laughs> Can we be honest for a minute with ourselves? I have to make sure that I put on this face so everybody knows just how holy I am. And here comes Jesus, here comes the Holy Spirit filling this room. And where are you? You're physically here. I can see you in the flesh, but your soul's not here. Your soul is trying to figure out how you're going to pay next week's bill. Your mind is trying to figure out how can I resolve that fight that I just had with my spouse right before service. Your soul is trying to figure out, hmm, I should probably make sure my house is clean before my next guest comes. And here he comes with the biggest nugget of revelation over this pulpit. And it just goes right past you. How many times have we been guilty going back and having to rewatch the sermon? Not because it was just that amazing. It's because you sit there and you're like, I don't think I heard a word pastor said today. This message really stepped on my toes when I received it. Because I believe all of us have a heart of Mary, but we really act like a Martha sometimes. She was serving the Lord, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when she allowed it to distract her, when she allowed it to make her anxious, think about it. I love seeing some of our gatekeepers in the back that are just worshiping and they're still in their post, and they're still serving and doing what they're meant to do. Could you imagine if they were like the soldiers in England just sitting, standing there, straight face, not emotion, you can't make them laugh, you can't make them smile? Those poor gatekeepers would probably never receive a thing that the Spirit of the Lord had to say. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. That word heaviness is anxiety. Anxiety in the heart of man maketh it stoop or wilt or drop down. But a good word maketh it glad. When you come into this place and the Spirit of God is moving and you still feel heavy, check yourself. What are you anxious about? Turn your ears on because a good word is going to make it glad. We hear an anointed word come over this pulpit every week, sometimes if we're lucky, twice a week. And we still walk out of here feeling beat down and flattened and stooped because it's our anxiety in the heart that maketh a man stoop. Mm, my God. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. But I have good news. <laughs> Jesus said this, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta find my clicker. 
<laughs> Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. If Martha would have just stopped to learn of him, to hear what he had to say, that appointment would have been so much different for her. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. In verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A lot of us come into this place and we have our own personal struggles going on. We have our own housekeeping we're trying to take care of when the Holy Spirit has walked into this place. Some of us have family who've been in the hospital for over a month now and the doctors don't know what's going on. We have people who have lost person after person after person in their family. We have people whose health is, is just deteriorating. But the Lord said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. Come unto me. Leave everything else behind. Don't be distracted. Don't be anxious of when your healing is going to come. Don't be anxious about when your bills are going to get paid. Obviously, it's a burden. Lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Lay it down at the feet of Jesus. 1 Peter 5 and 7, it tells us this, that we are meant to cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us. Not just cast them and we'll see what he'll do, but he's telling you, I care about you, Eric. I care about you, Nancy. I care about you, Jackie. Lay it at my feet and let me handle it. Take my yoke. Take my yoke. Take my burden. It's so much lighter than what you're trying to carry. Do you not see that I'm trying to speak to you? Do you not see that there's room at my feet for you just to rest? Do you not see? Can you not hear me? Let go of the anxiousness. Let go of the distraction. Let go of the hurt. Let go of the pain. Cast all of your care upon him because he cares for you. It's not a one-way relationship. He doesn't just expect us to, you know what, here, Lord, take all this, and then we're stuck stranded. No, 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 no. We cast our care because he loves us so much that he doesn't want you to carry it. He took that load at the cross. My God. Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. Don't guess that I'm God. But know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the heathen. And I will be exalted in all of the earth. But you have to just be still and know. Be still. I don't know about any of you, but when you get anxiety, it's really hard to be still. Your heart's racing, your mind is racing, you can't, sometimes you can't just stop shaking or moving because you can't stop thinking about what this world has going on, but if you can just be still and take every thought into captivity and know that he is God and trust that he's going to take care of every one of your needs and trust and know that that healing is on the way and trust and know when you lay that care guess what you can take up that healing when you lay down that burden you can take up that joy it's not just to lay it down he has something he wants to give you your hands are just full of everything else so just lay it at his feet and be still and just rest Martha, poor Martha, couldn't be still long enough just to hear his voice. And poor Mary, here she is trying to absorb everything that he has to say because she knew it was an appointment. But poor Mary, Martha says, aren't you going to make her come do any of this? That's a real sibling thing right there. What about her? <laughs> But Jesus said, she's chosen the right thing. I'm not going to take this away from her. 
The Lord didn't say, stop serving me and come sit down. No, 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 no. He just needed her to listen and be still for a moment and just realize what was going on. Sometimes, and I, I apologize, I told you this stepped on my feet too. Sometimes when we come into the presence of God and there's a big breakthrough and we've welcomed him in, right? You've been in your seat and you think, Lord, come into this place, I worship you, and his presence moves in, but then you're distracted and you're too anxious and here we go, Jasmine's getting a breakthrough and you're like, all right, again, like she gets this, why isn't she over here? And her, okay, her health isn't the greatest, why isn't she over here worrying about herself? But the Lord says, she is where she needs to be. She's laid everything else aside. Our flesh is our enemy, first of all. And we should be glad for our brothers and sisters when they finally get a grip of what God has in store. When they finally have that breakthrough. When you finally see them take that lap that's taken them probably years to finally do. And here they are. Their soul has reached new heights. They've finally gotten a breakthrough in themselves. And yet here we are in our poor little me self, so distracted and so anxious, wondering when's it going to be my turn? Why am I always standing in my place of ministry and I don't ever get ministered to? That is not the right mindset to have. If you're in ministry, true ministry, not robotic ministry, but true ministry, God is going to take care of you. God will take care of you. It doesn't mean just because you're ministering, you have to stop ministering just to receive something. But I don't know how many of you know this, but it's when you go to lay your hand on somebody at the altar that you get joy in your spirit that you've been needing for 10 years. Or when you go to lay hands on somebody in their seat, hey, you know what? I don't, my flesh doesn't feel depressed anymore. My anxiety is gone. I wonder why that is. It's because you laid it down at the feet of Jesus. You took up your ministry. You took up your calling. And he did what he wanted to do through you. My God, if Martha could have just sat down the broom for one second and heard what he had to say, I believe her life would have been changed. I believe she wouldn't have wanted to leave the feet of Jesus. She would have never gotten up. I think she would have been elbowing Mary out of the way. My God, that anxiety, those distractions are what's going to hold us back. We've come too far to go back to where we were. We've come too far to be back in the poor me stage. We've come too far to allow somebody else to be in the poor me stage. We've come too far. Welcoming the Lord into this place. Yes, this is his sanctuary but he inhabits the praises of his people. And it breaks my heart because you know what? I think there are so many churches out there these days who are so anxious of their schedules. All right, we have to make sure this service is over by 12 o'clock because the next one rolls in at 1. Got to make sure the seats are cleaned up so everybody has a nice place. The tissue boxes are full. Oh, you're getting a breakthrough. I'm sorry. It's 12.15. We're running a little late, so I need you to go ahead and leave. We'll meet you in the office for some prayer if you need it. My Lord. <laughs> mm. And then they wonder why things have felt a little dry. Because they've been so focused and distracted on their schedules, so distracted and focused on the anxiety of the program, that people are not getting the breakthroughs that they need. That joy hasn't been restored to the person who's been suicidal. That somebody hasn't been delivered by alcoholism, by a marriage that's falling apart because they couldn't take an extra 10 minutes to serve and serve through the Holy Ghost, not serve out of their flesh. My God. There's a difference between welcoming him into this place and welcoming him into your situation. He inhabits the praises of his people when two or three are gathered in his name. So you know what? As long as Pastor and Mother Morgan and Nate and Diane are doing their job, I get the back, back wave, I'm good. You know what? You, you'll get a little splash of it. But if you would just dive deep into the living water, 
if you would just jump in, dive in head first. Just get yourself soaked in what the Spirit has for you. Don't just welcome him into this place. Welcome him into your situation so you can let go of that anxiety once and for all. So you can let go of the distraction once and for all. It doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do. It doesn't matter what he's trying to speak to you. My God. My God. I don't know if you were feeling half of what I'm feeling. Brother Nate, would you come? Mm. Imagine, just imagine if Noah was just too anxious by the plans that God had with that ark. He was just a little too distracted on how long it was going to take him to get it done. Imagine if the blind man on the roadside screamed Jesus' name and welcomed him to the corner that he was on. But when Jesus walked up, he's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Go ahead and just pass me. I don't know, I don't know. He would never have received his sight. If Paul and Silas were just a little too anxious and distracted, their chains have never been broken. The other's chains would never have been broken. It's a ripple effect in the spirit. It's a ripple effect. Because I don't know about you, but when someone else gets their breakthrough, whoo, you know what? Maybe my flesh may feel a little left out, but my soul rejoices with you because I know, I know what it feels like to just crave a breakthrough. But you know what? Praise God Nancy got her breakthrough that she's been praying for. Praise God that Mother Morgan got her healing that she's been praying for. I may not see my outcome just yet, but if it's happening for her, it's going to happen for me. It's going to happen for me. My God. Stand with me. If you've come into this place today and you had the intention of a Mary and you were ready, but the Spirit of God moved in and your mindset was on tomorrow, and you find yourself to be a Martha, I want you to just take a minute and just center and realize this is a divine appointment today. There's never gonna be another one like it and you're here for a purpose. Your breakthrough could be right across the threshold. Your breakthrough, Jesus could be standing here holding it out to you, just waiting for you to empty your hands and lay it at his feet. That weight, that burden, your depression, your anxiety, your distractions, your worries of tomorrow. If you can just lay them at the feet of Jesus. And all he has to do is say, here you go. You needed your joy, here you go. You needed some wisdom, here you go. If you needed some answers, here you go. But if your hands are too full, to receive what he has for you. Just take a moment this evening and let it go. Because I promise you, you don't want to walk out of this place not getting what he has in store for you today. Welcoming him into this sanctuary is not the same as welcome, welcoming him into your situation. Because he can be in here all that he wants to be. But if you're not interacting, what good is it? What relationship is that? A relationship takes two. A relationship takes two. So just take a moment. And whatever it is that you need to let go of, your fear, your worry, your bills, the problems in your marriage, things that you've been, your flesh has been depressed over, your job situation, your mortgage, your spouse's health situation, your own health situation. If you've come in here today with that weighing on your mind and distracting you, just take a moment and let it go. And know if you just welcome him in and sit at the feet of Jesus and listen that he's gonna speak to you.
troubles vanish hearts are Nothing like his presence. Nothing like his presence. He has moved so mightily in this service already. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Thank you, Kingdom Gate family. God, just pray that you continue to move, God. Oh, that your presence, God your spirit God I pray that I get out of the way God and my vessel is surrendered God oh to give a word God to your people God the way that you intended it God for this day in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah heat has been turned up lately. Amen. The heat has been turned up lately. Anybody feel that? The last three messages that pastor preached, worth the wait, where the glory had chosen in the furnace. I have a title tonight. Why is it so hot? Why is it so hot? For, that's hot. It doesn't get any hotter than that. Whew. And then Drew and Jasmine on Sunday, and that spoke to me. And Drew's preaching about you should be seeking your face and not seeking your message. Well, I need a message. <laughs> <laughs> right now <laughs> so I was at home and that was running through my head can I do both can I do <laughs> so I'm seeking your face so I'm doing that but I still need a message <laughs> amen so I've just been getting uh, receiving 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 so I'm blessed I'm blessed that God speaks to me through ministers and through teachers and just want to echo what Latricia said and the revelations and the and the mic drops and are, are coming from from the teaching as well as from the as from the preaching I'm so happy when I get to come to this place I was thinking that today and seeing everyone and singing and I was small I'm so happy that I get to come I can't imagine what my life would be like I probably wouldn't be alive so it's not really that hard to imagine I guess but there's an increased level of heat lately. There's an increased level of, of urgency. Speaking to my sister on the phone yesterday, she watches our messages online, she follows. And she had been behind um, from spending a lot of time away from home last year, med medical reasons. And she called yesterday and she said, um, I just finished Chosen in the Flame, Chosen in the Furnace. And I said, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. And she said she wanted to catch up, and I, I could feel the shift. I could feel that she had had received it. I could feel it over the telephone. I know her. We speak often. I felt like she took that message on and, and talked about being tested in the flame and being tested in the fire. And I told her yesterday I, I would be, you know, in my office the majority of the day, so I wouldn't be available for a lot of chit-chat today. So when she called today, I thought, now what did she do? And she called, and she was 
in absolute tears of joy because God came through today with a huge answer to prayer for her and what's going on in her life. It was amazing. And I prayed with her. I said, you can call me anytime for this kind of a testimony. And she made the direct correlation between receiving and taking some action on what he'd given her in that revelation. And, he, and it was in the mail already, so he knew it was going to happen because it came in the mailbox. This is a huge thing for her. It wasn't just a check in the mail. This is something much bigger than that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I promised her I would talk about her. There you go. I get to do, I get to do that. So what a tell. Hallelujah. 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 I hope you're receiving these messages of revelation the same way. I hope you're receiving these messages of revelation and truth into your spirit and activating them in your life. I know some can certainly identify with being tested in fire. Got some friends out there that I know can identify with being tested in the fire. I can testify for myself. I'm going to testify for myself. I'm going to be obedient and do that. I'm going to overcome her by the word of my testimony. I'm going to overcome her by the word of my testimony. I've had some experience lately in some flames. I was in some flames lately. I know I'm not special. I'm not alone because of that experience. But I'm called to overcome with my testimony. I'm called to preach the goodness of God. What God is, what he's speaking lately, it's timely. It was timely for me. He loves me. He does that. Some of you know the details because God knitted us together. That's why you know the details of of what I went through. My trials, they've, they've refreshed me. Maybe not in the very heat of them. I wasn't feeling refreshed at that moment, but I am now. I feel refreshed now. It was to refresh me. It was to clarify my call. It was to qualify me to preach what he's given me to preach. We're supposed to preach what we know, amen? I know something about it. I'm a credible witness. I know what I know. I know his goodness. I know his glory. I know his healing power. I know him as my comforter. I know his presence. He was here tonight in such a big way. I recognized it immediately. His presence. It's unwavering. His presence is louder than any unbearable pain. His presence was louder than unbearable pain. I trust him. I trust him. I was speaking on the phone with with Evelyn recently about trials, and we were in an agreement that, that they paled. They pale in comparison to eternity. These trials pale in comparison to eternity. They shrink when the kingdom of God comes into view. They shrink. Why is it so hot now, though? My message. Well, he gave me this. Because the oil is hot. The oil is hot. The oil in the vessel is taking some heat. Do we remember? You're going to remember because I'm going to bring it to your remembrance here in just a moment. The oil in your ve- our vessels is taking on some heat. The oil in the lamp and the vessel... So you recall, it's costly. I don't want cheap oil. You want cheap oil? The day is soon approaching when the bride will be revealed. We frequently reference Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's part of the foundation of the church. 
Amen. Tonight, I'm going to bring to your remembrance the bride and the bride message. Tonight, I urge you to take stock of your oil. Take stock of your oil. We spent an entire season on these messages, but it's been a while until I was asking, why is it so hot? Why now? Why the heat? Why the urgency? Are you coming tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? If some days it feels like it's tomorrow. That's how urgent it is. The first message I ever preached was entitled, Unsuspecting Bride. It was five minutes. <laughs> I liked it so much, I think I did it again for the next one that was 10 or how, how, however that, that uh, training went, praise God. And I knew what I knew about my experience up to them. I didn't have any idea what I was talking about and what was to come in the way of revelation. It was before the book came out. I thought it was about me getting to come to church now. <laughs> That's really what my message was about. But I've never forgotten, and I hold dear, the message of the unsuspecting bride. The message and the revelations we received about the bride and the oil, they're not one and done. That wasn't a one and done. We received the revelation. We shout victory over the escape hatch. What's the escape hatch? Uh, let's look at Luke 21, 36. Just want to remind us of the escape hatch. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. It's the escape hatch. We know the revealing of God's word in Revelation 12 that the end time church travails in the birth of the bride. We are the end time church. Are we the end time church? Amen. Are these the end times? Amen. We've reviewed the evidence. This is the end time church. These are the end times. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. We know the enemy awaits the opportunity to devour this bride once she's revealed. We know he fails. He fails. Thank you, Jesus. I'm preaching and bringing to remembrance the oil in our lamps, the oil in our vessels. Remember, the oil in our vessels, that's what separates. It's the oil in the vessel. That's what separates the bride that has made herself ready, is the oil in the vessel. Not a one-time thing. I'm going to repeat that. In other words, we weren't just to receive it one time. I feel like some people think that. Oh, I'm in the bride now. I got that. No, 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 this is... We have to keep going. We have to keep going. The lamps need to be tended. The revelations, the oil we receive now, it's for your vessel. It's for our vessels. Like Latricia said, if you didn't quite get something or you need to go back and watch it to make sure you receive that revelation, then you need to do that. If you're part of this ministry and you, need to, you miss a service, you need to go and watch that found myself the other day on a phone call. I was asked a question. Uh, Eric called and asked me a question about a message. I felt like I should have known the answer to right away. Well, the message was from November. I don't say, I don't know. Look it up. So I took the time. I did my best to answer the question. I took the time. I looked it up. Just go to YouTube. Say, Phoenix of Obadiah. And he pops up. And there's the, there, there was the answer. And so I let him know, here's where it is, and here's the minutes where it is. You got to go find it. You got to go find it in ministry to answer the questions. So that went into my vessel, too, because he asked me a question. 
This oil that's reserved for the bride are those who are willing to go the extra mile. You've heard that before preached. You've also read it before in the base of Leah Code. It's reserved for those that are willing to pay the price. This oil, it's hot. It's hot now. Don't remember it being this hot. This oil is hot. Like a furnace sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. Those that have an ear, let them hear. Those that have an ear, let them hear. We know the parable. We haven't pulled it up in some time. I'm gonna, we're going to read it. We're going to read it tonight. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. How is your vessel today? How is your vessel today? Not how was your vessel some years ago. How is it going to be tomorrow? How is it today? Are all of this year's revelations secured in oil? Does just being here listening secure them in the extra oil? Does just watching it secure them in the extra oil? Being in the bride looks like something. <laughs> I like that, looks like something. Being in the bride looks like something. I'm keenly aware, keenly aware of the price of my oil. I'm keenly aware of that today. I'm keenly aware of the heat of my extra oil today. It's cost me something. The reason it's hot, the reason it's so hot, it's drawing near, church family. It's drawing very near. It's heating up. It's heating up. The revelations are coming fast. And they're heated. We have to receive them, apply them, and secure them. Secure them in our oil, in mine. I'm not going to... Can't borrow from anybody else when the time comes. Now, yes, we're called to, to help and encourage and grow others in how to do it sooner than later, praise God. But your vessel is all on you. It's all on you. Your spouse can't do it for you. Mother Morgan can't do it for you. You have to do it. You have to get these revelations. If you didn't quite get it, watch it again. Ask questions. I tell you, your ministry team loves questions about revelations. We love questions about the Bible. Much prefer those phone calls over some of the others that we receive. <laughs> Woo! 
Thank you, Jesus. Take stock. Check your lamps. Take stock of your oil. It wasn't a one and done. It wasn't a one and done. We're still working on it. In fact, even more so, bigger messages, hotter messages. Oh. Be faithful to the Sabbath. Be teachers of those that seek. Encourage one another. Encourage one another when the oil gets hot. Remember our brothers and sisters. Remember one another when they're in hot trials and they're in testing. We're, we're, I'm not called to be a spectator. You're not called to be a spectator when I'm going through it. Well, I wonder how that's going to turn out. <laughs> I don't know if she's handling that quite the way I would. Or that wasn't perfect. We're not, we're not called to spectate one another's trials. If you're feeling that, that means you need to do something. Not watch. Don't watch. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I thank God. I thank God for my church family. And I want to openly thank those that held me up in prayer. Every day I was held up in prayer and encouraged. The encouragement that came. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Those that stepped up when they saw a need in our household, thank you. It may have seemed small to you, but it meant the world to me to take that distraction. It may not seem like mowing the grass is such a big deal, but it mattered to me. Or just stopping by because I can't carry this thing from the garage because of what I'm going through. Just come by for 15 minutes. It mattered to me. So watch for one another. Watch for one another. I'm called to tell you what I've been through. I'm called to tell you what we need to do for one another in these trials and to help secure this oil in our vessels, we're in this together. And the heat, it's not going away. It doesn't, it's, it's moving around. <laughs> it's not going away, it's, mo it's moving around. I'm more qualified now. I know what to look for. I know what to do. I know how it feels. We're all qualified to encourage. We're all qualified to send a text of encouragement. And I can assure you everyone in this room is qualified to do a couple of the things that I needed help with. They weren't that difficult. <laughs> He's laughing. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not feeling so secure about the oil in your vessel tonight, I have good news we already talked about the these altars tonight and they were opened as a response to the message that Latricia preached but the good news is always going to be at the altar good news you see these altars I want to talk about these altars up here <laughs> it was uh, well it was just, um, just almost two years ago almost two years ago that the altars were brought back into the sanctuary for kingdom gate two years ago they became altars in kingdom gate what a time we had getting these in here. What a fight. Those that were here and remember every obstacle that could come up, came up trying to get these altars prepared and into this sanctuary. It 
Why? Because, because of what happens here. Because of what has happened here. Because of what happened right here tonight. And what will happen at these altars. And it's seeking God and taking it to him, God. Help me. Help me. Be assured. Help me be assured that my vessel and the oil in it is properly secured. Am I missing anything? You know, the Holy Ghost can bring things to your remembrance. Whatever God wants you to know, whatever he wants you to remember, the Holy Ghost can bring it to your remembrance. Trust me in that I rely on him to do it. And he does it every time. How am I going to remember all that? How am I going to memorize all that? I'm not. I'm not going to. He brings it to my remembrance. Is there a revelation that I missed? Because I was having a Martha kind of day. (laughs) Or I wasn't there. Have I been faithful in watching the services that I missed? Are there revelations that they're talking about now and I wasn't around? Have I heard about the messages in the bride of Christ? Am I responsible for that oil? I wasn't here. Am I responsible for that oil? Go back. It's recorded. So we continue to offer ourselves. And we grip the altar for God to strip away anything and everything that prevents us from securing the extra oil. It's a matter of eternity. It's a matter of eternity. Where are you going to spend it? It's a matter of being able to escape. I want to escape. Amen. Take stock. Take stock of your vessel tonight. Take stock of your extra oil tonight and in the coming days. It costs too much. It costs too much to turn back now. It costs too much. Don't waste it on the things that don't matter. Don't waste it on the things that don't matter. Don't spill it due to carelessness. Don't spill it due to carelessness. Hang on when it gets hot. Hang on. And hold each other up. Hold each other up. Remember that. I feel a need to repeat that. When you're watching somebody going through something, when you watch somebody and they fall or they trip, don't be a spectator. Don't be a spectator and wonder how this is going to turn out. We're all called to minister and to hold one another up. When it gets hot. And lastly, remember, the bride of Christ is going to look like something. It's going to look like something.